Welcome and thank you for joining me for this session. We'll be talking about how you can work with course activities. We'll be talking about um, understanding how your courses fit into the entire user journey using our platforms. You'll learn requirements for a course to be able to, to be available for training. You'll see activity options and in addition to our labs, not just our labs, and we'll review various options that can be enabled on those course activities. So well, let's get started. So we have a user journey and basically this is uh, from beginning with creating labs all the way through delivering that training to your end users. And as you can see, we have the LOD side here of the platform, Lab On Demand, creating your lab to publishing your lab. And then the TMS side of the platforms from creating a course to finding a delivery method to delivering that training to your users. So we're talking today about the first step in the TMS, which is to create a course. So let's go take a look. So the creating a course, we're I'm not gonna spend much time on, but I do wanna point out a couple of different things. For instance, we do have some required fields like inputting a name on the course. And um, your organization and program will be predetermined. You can change that organization to, and that is who manages the course or who has access to edit and manage the course. Training days is another required field. It always defaults to five. What this actually controls is when you're creating a class, it'll have a default number of sessions that come, come in to the class, and this is where it comes from. It comes from the course training days. So you can change that to whatever you want in terms of sessions. You also have to have a content provider. And while this is a piece that is going away in the future, uh, it is still used by our billing, and you probably only have one, um, one option here, go ahead and input it. There are a couple of things that are required for your course to be available to schedule. Two of those are right down here. You can choose to uh, have it available to schedule for classes by choosing available instructor led, and you can have it available to create course assignments by checking available self-paced. These two functions, you can set a default on your organization profile preferences and choose whether or not every course you create has one or both of these checked. And if you do not have these checked, when you actually go uh, finish your course, if you don't have it checked for instructor-led and you go to look for the course when you're trying to schedule a class, it won't be there. Same thing for self-paced. The other piece that has to be in place in order to schedule the course is under availability so you have to add your publishing group. And normally for most of you, that's only going to, again, have one option in there, unless you're publishing content out to other organizations and selling that content to them. You'll only have one here. If this is not set, when you actually save the course, you'll, you'll get a message up here that says it's not in a publishing group, you can't schedule it for anything. You don't need to add a publishing group until you're ready to use it to schedule classes or course assignments or put it into a subscription. And I have two points of caution here. <laughs> um, the first one is that once you have added a publishing group and you've either created a course assignment or you've scheduled a class that and it started, you can't change the labs any longer. You can't add a, a lab activity and you cannot remove a lab activity. It is no longer available. So you may wanna wait on scheduling or inputting your publishing group until you're ready for that to be used, for your course to be used. The other piece that is a big point of caution is that when you have these uh, available instructor-led and avail available self-paced checked, they actually affect your activities. So let's say I add a video here, and you can see right now that available instructor-led and available self-paced are are both checked because this activity would be available to classes and also to course assignments. That is why that is there. But if I go out here to basic information and 
let me tell you, I did this a few years back and I was fooling around with a mock course and I unchecked available instructor led and then thought, oh, and I wanna show you now, oh, available instructor led is no longer an option here. So I went back in and I checked it again and I thought everything was good. It, I had activities in my course, I removed it, uh, available instructor led or it could be available self-paced and then I added it back in again Now, when I go back to my activities available instructor led is there again but it's unchecked what happened with me was all of the people that were taking that course no longer had access to any of the labs or other activities that was that was a bit of a surprise for me be aware that <laughs> once you scheduled and a class has started or you've used a course for a course assignment, you can no longer change the labs. So you may wanna wait on the publishing group and uh, removing that instructor-led or self-paced can affect any activities you already have in your course. Yeah, let's take a look at each of the activities that we have. I'm going to look at sections at the end. So let's take a look at SCORM and adding a SCORM module. So what is SCORM? Tech it's short for shareable content object reference model. If you're anything like me, that name doesn't help you at all, but what it is and what it does, it's a way for, it's an addition onto content that allows a learning management system to read it. What ends up happening is you develop content and that might be a video, it might be multiple videos, it might be interactive learning modules or uh, modules that you've put together. Then once you've created it, you can use a tool. I have Camtasia, so I use that. And instead of saving that as an MP4, I save it as SCORM. And then it is uploaded to the TMS. So from site admin, you'd come to create SCORM module. It'll open this page for you and it waits for you to upload your files. The SCORM has to be 1.2 and the zip file can't be over one gig. I'm gonna close this. And then you can put in more things like an evaluation method. You can say uh, whether the student completed it or if it was left incomplete. You can say if they passed or failed and that can be determined by their last module or all the modules being completed. You can set the width and the height, the size of your, your module. You can have it open in a new window. You can show table of contents. You can enable auto navigation, some different things. Once you've saved that, it's now available for you to use for a SCORM module. Some people ask questions about storage. We don't charge for storage on SCORM. So we're gonna add a SCORM module. I'll come in, I'll search. I'm just gonna take the first one here. I can add multiple items. If I choose all at once before I click okay. And on my SCORM module, the first thing I want you to notice is that it has available instructor led is here, but it is unchecked. And that is intentional because if you are creating a course that will be used both instructor led and self paced, um, you may have videos for the self paced learner, but you don't want the videos there for the students that are sitting there with an instructor who's going to explain all the pieces instead. So, but sometimes you like to have a, a nice video break. Um, or something to change up the instructor um, experience, the class experience. So it's still available to be cho chosen, but for SCORM, by default, it is not chosen. If you are using SCORM in a class, you can set it to have post-class access. Just like our labs are given 180 days post-class lab access, or it is, um, change, that's our, our normal, but some people change that to other things. You can determine how long after the class ends, a student still, your class still has access to that uh, SCORM content. So that's available for you. Uh, some of the fields that are normal for each one, each activity, one is duration. So if you know how long this SCORM module is, you can input how many minutes. I don't bother with seconds. You can also choose who it's available to. By default, it'll be available to everyone. And you can also make it available to instructors only. So then your students will never see it. Um, so you can have things in here that are specific, activities that are specific to the instructor and not to the students at all. 
you can choose to have a an activity required for course completion and for course completion that means that it is counted against the progress of completing a class or a course assignment so maybe i have 10 activities in here and only four of them are required for course completion i may have finished seven of them with one of them being a required for course completion and six of them being not required it'll only show me 25 percent uh, completed on the class even though i'm more than halfway through all the activities so that is how that comes into play and then available instructor-led or available self-paced will make um, this course content show for for instructor-led for a class and for a self-paced for a course assignment or a subscription assignment so those are the normal everyday um, what do you call it requirements or uh, settings that are available here okay the next one we're going to look at is labs and this is a lab that you have created in um, lab on demand and then have actually published it out to the tms or the training management system uh, labs you created are available for you to add to the courses if you've contracted to have access to content created by another organization you don't have access to use those labs to create courses. They're going to create their own courses for you um, and you'll have access to them. There are some content providers that will work with organizations to create specific courses for them and contract that with them. So if you're interested in that, you can uh, contact that content provider. So let's add a lab or two. Like I said before, you can add uh, multiple items uh, at, a, at the same time. And the order that you add them in, if I choose select visible, it's going to add all of these labs and it's going to add them in the order that, I, that they're shown in here. But if I go in and I add a lab, like my first lab as Joel, and then add automatic course creation, it's going to put those activities in the order that I chose them. So this will show first my first lab and automatic course creation will show second. So you can control which way um, the activities show and you can move them around and we'll see that later. So with a lab, uh, the duration is set in lab on demand and it comes over to uh, the activity in, in the course on its own. Um, a new setting here, we have required availability, we have course completion, instructor-led self-paced, is allow retakes. So uh, this came, started being used when we started having exams in the, through labs on the, um, in the TMS as activities. And whether or not a person could retake a lab became an issue because they, there were people that didn't want their students to take a lab a second time, uh, take a, an exam a second time. So you can uncheck allow retakes. And uh, I think there are also, I know there are also settings for this in um, LOD that can control whether or not they can retake things. You'll also notice that we have um, available instructor led and with available instructor led, I have this ability to assign to students manually. This is only available if it is available for a classroom and it's available to everyone. So it disappears if it is not available to everyone and available instructor led. When I check this, then this lab would not show to any of the students until it is assigned to them specifically in the class. So let's take a look at that. And I have right here, I have three activities in this class and both over here on the side, uh, view activity access is showing as a link. And that's because in this course, both of these are set to assign manually. And the video is not, the video is available to everyone. Let's take a quick look at my lovely student. If we look at my student, 
all she sees is the video. Okay. So um, when I click on the view activity access for the first one, I don't have no, no students are assigned to it. And I'm going to edit the, the access and add students. And you can see here that it is um, filtering out just for the students that are enrolled in the class and I have access to add them. I'm gonna add the bottom three actually and say okay and save it. I can also come back in here and edit the students I've added. It shows me who they are and then I can edit by clicking on edit. I can add more students or I can remove students that are in here already. I'll save again. And let's go down to the bottom and add the other two students for the sample assessment. And add students. And I'm gonna do Aaron and Aiden there and click OK and save them. Okay, so how did that change for my student? This is student Jane, and now she has the assessment for sample colors, but she does not have the other sample assessment that is available to the other two students. So she can take that and, and use the assessment um, because it has been assigned to her. If it is not assigned, they do not see it at all. That is activity assignment. Let's go on. We have another, uh, we have three different uh, external link items. One is add video, one is add document, and the other is add external link. Let's take a look at them. You can see name, URL, description, and then the settings down here. And each one of these has the same thing available to them. The only thing that's different between them is the icon that's showing. So we're only gonna talk about video at the moment. So when you add a video, so these are just links that go out to another site and the only difference was the icons. Um, when I go to add a video or any of the others, I'm going to put in a name. I'll be original and say video. And then I'm gonna to need to put in a URL. So I'm gonna go out to YouTube and pick up one of our uh, videos that are out here. And I'm gonna copy the video URL. And when I come back in here, it's going to give me the URL. And unless I um, set this to be embedded, it will have to be uh, set to open in a new window. This is a new uh, setting that's down here. Um, or else it will not work. And the way you set it to be embedded is you say, type in embed in between the YouTube and the um, and the ID at the end. And at that point, you don't have to have it open in any window. It will open within the window that is already open. And again, you can put in your duration, course completion, and open a new window is the only thing that is a new new option for you there. Now, another item that we can do is add an assessment. And an assessment is allows you to evaluate your, your learner's knowledge and their comprehension on a topic and how much they've learned since, the, uh, since reviewing any of the information in the class or the course. So these assessments are created in the TMS and they are multiple choice questions with either one correct answer or multiple correct answers. When you actually create an assessment, you're going to um, only have like one field that's available to you. And none of these are showing, um, none of these links are showing. So you'll come in and you'll put in the name of the assessment and you'll save it. And after you save it, you get the ability to design, delete search. Well, I think search is always there. Um, you get the ability to design it. And once you have the design link, you can open it and start adding questions. And as you add a question, you have the choice between the single or multiple answer. You put in the text of the question. And we have two additional pieces in here. And you put in the answers to the questions or potential answers. 
And then you can also add a URL link out to a website for more information for that student so that they can go and, and, and learn more about the subject in case they are interested. And we also have a field for an answer explanation. So uh, if they are, if you allow them to review the assessment, they'll be able to come back and say, and you'll give them a reason why that answer was the correct answer. So here you can see, based on what I've created, that uh, the these three bolded answers are the correct ones. I can review and see what the um, explanation for the answer is, and I can click out here to uh, go to the website and view which web website it is uh, and get more information. So you can review everything that you've added to the student. As a student, we're gonna go back to our assessment we added here. And you can see that I, um, when a student has taken an assessment, they can see what the score is. They can choose to retake it or review it because those options are set on the course. We'll see in just a second. And if they do review it, they can see the bold and green underlined are correct. They have access to that website. They can see the answer reasoning because on the review. They can see which uh, answers are incorrect because they're not bold and they're underlined in red. And so they have the ability then to go back and take a look at, at that. So let's look at adding that on the course and add an assessment. Yeah, I have to. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Okay, there we go. Because I could add multiple, I couldn't just double click on it. So, um, again, you have the same um, uh, settings that we've looked at before and the allow retakes like we saw in the lab is here and you can choose whether or not the student can retake that that assessment and allow review is a new one for you that hasn't been there before so we can choose whether or not we want them to be able to review the answers afterwards okay we're getting down to lt the last couple ones here uh, lti tools our learning tools interoperability is what it stands for and it lets you add an activity that is coming from another website uh, with a secure connection. In order to add LTI activities, you have to first set up an LTI provider. And when you do this, you'll be given uh, from that site, you'll be uh, given a key and a secret, and you'll add them in here in order to set that provider. Once you've done that, you can set up a resource link. So for the specific activity you want, and you'll have to add that provider, the one that is already created that we just looked at, and then you'll have to have a URL that you'll add into the activity. So once you have set up your LTI, you can come in and add your resource link into the course. And this gives a the end user a seamless uh, um, access to that resource. It doesn't look to them like they've gone out to another site. Um, it just opens and launches right from, from their page. And the last piece that we're going to take a look at are, is the uh, Add Microsoft Learn activity. And these are, were provided by Microsoft and anybody can use them to uh, enhance the learning that they have going on in in their labs, in their courses. And this is just an example. It pulls you out to the site, um, the Microsoft site, and gives them activities that they can add and objectives and things they have to finish. So you can add that to enhance your courses. And you just click on Microsoft Learn Activity, and then you can choose whichever items that you want and click OK. So, now, moving activities around. Let's take a look at that. There are a few ways you can move activities around. Um, one of my favorite ways is just to change the number. So if I put the video uh, and I change it to number two and hit enter, it has now jumped up to number two. 
Another way that you can move things around, we're going to move the video again, is you can move up and down using these arrows over here on the side. And you can remove activities using the X. So I can move it down and it moves, it switches places for you. And I can move it up if I want, obviously. Then the last way, let's actually add a section first. So sections allow you to put um, categories or add different, it adds a heading into the, um, <clears throat> into the list of activities. So it allows you to give some structure to what's going on and for your, for your students. So if I'm going to, I'll just put additional resources here. Okay, and I can add, you can see I have the same list of um, links here as I do below. If I'm using the list below, it's going to add activities outside of the section. If I'm using the list within, I'm going to add activities within the section. So if I come out here and I do the Microsoft thing again and add learning content, it'll add it directly in there. And you can still see it has a box around it in addition to that box for the activity. Now, if I do want to move some things, like perhaps I want all of those um, Microsoft Learn as, as uh, additional resources. I'm gonna click on this little uh, thing that looks like a bullet list. And when I do, I get options. And this is the only way you can move something into a section that is outside of a section. So I can click on move here or cancel, and that's within the, the additional resources section. But I can also use it to move to other spots within the activities. So it is a little bit helpful to be able to see exactly where you're putting it at times. So I'll move here, and I can also move them out of the section by selecting the, the same little link and saying move here. So that is how you can move those activities around and remove them and have those settings. So that is everything I wanted to cover for today. And thank you for joining us for the webinar. And we hope to see you again at, uh, at another one soon.